we have tried to make them aware. Um, I went to a few of the meetings. I went to uh, San Francisco. I went to Broadmoor. And uh, the moment they saw me, they made an about face <laughs> and uh, went the other way. So uh, we try, we've tried, and um, hopefully, I think um, from what I've read in a magazine, uh, David Fay and uh, the USGA is now uh, thinking about it. So uh, I'm very, very excited because if they don't hurry up, I'm going to miss my tea time. <laughs> and I want an opportunity to go for another national title, just like my peers on the men's senior. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed, I'm saying a Hail Mary, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> How important is it to all of you to, to play in this championship? I've been waiting forever, <laughs> literally. Uh, you know, I thought, you know, with the um, advent of such great players out here that the USGA would realize that uh, women's senior would be ideal. And they give you all kinds of alibis. I've talked to, I don't know how many of them, because a lot of them are very good friends of mine. And uh, they say, well, there aren't enough players. And uh, just, I said, well, look at our roster. There's plenty of players. Plus, when we first had the women's US Open, the, uh, we didn't have enough pros to fill the field, so we had amateurs, mm -hmm. and it made great golf, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because the amateurs always thought they were as good as the <laughs> pros, and so you had that little battle starting every uh, U.S. Open, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's there, I mean, we have a lot of women seniors uh, that are very good amateur players, but I don't think we need them. We already have enough players to fill the fields. Mm -hmm. And clearly, you need another big USGA title. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, it's been so many years since I had a chance to beat Bobby Jones' titles, uh, you know, USGA, but they forgot about me. <laughs> well, hopefully not, not for long, too much longer. Beth? Well, it's just... I mean, it's a hole. It's a big hole in their championship schedule. And unfortunately for us, we're the only ones that they don't have a tournament for. Right. So I just don't think it looks good on the USGA's part. And, you know, I mean, I certainly would have loved the chance to play for a national championship again, but, you know, I didn't, didn't have that chance when I turned 50. Still don't have that chance. And for us, you know, we look at the Champions Tour and things like that, and, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to take in some respects because once you leave the LPGA Tour, there's very little out there for us of this age. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the guys, and they continue on and are doing very, very well with the Champions Tour. So it's, you know, it's, it's a big hole in the schedule, I think. And Nancy, you know, I, can you talk about fan support? I understand, you know, the galleries still come out here. Do you, do you think that, you know, that it, a U.S. Women's Open would be well attended? Well, I would hope so. Senior. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think when you look at the players that are playing on the Legends Tour, to me, they were the cream of the crop of the LPGA Tour years ago. They were the players that I think brought more people out to watch women's golf. They knew the players. Um, I think they were the players that had a lot of personality and really um, made the LPG Tour shine. I watched, you know, Jan Joanne Carner when I was an amateur getting ready to maybe come on the tour and watched her and her ability to, to have fun, to play golf, to make it look like fun, no matter what she was doing, she always seemed the same. Mm -hmm. And, I, you know, I watched her, but then when I came out, then there was Bradley and Daniel and Chin and Jan and you know, you're, there were so many. There was so much more out there when I got to really get out there and play, and the and the people that came out to watch loved it. There was a lot of competition, head-to-head -head rivalries, and and still the Legends Tour. These players mean business. They play hard. I haven't played well, so I kind of <coughs> watch them and root for them. <laughs> but it's fun to see that they, it, golf is still what they truly love to do, mm -hmm. and to have a a women's Legends U.S. Open 
would be fantastic. I mean, I'd have to really work on my game because I'd really like to play well. I never won a U.S. Open, so it'd be a lot of fun to be to participate. But you know, in any kind of golf, women's golf, we've always had to fight very hard to to uh, to get what we deserved. Um, and unfortunately, we always seem to be behind the times, uh, following the, the guys. And and there's days I just hit my head against the wall, wonder why. Because they work just as hard, they they give back just as much, and truly the fans really feel like our tours, the women's tour, LPGA, and Legends tour are more approachable. So why not? You know, I think that they should, we should definitely have that opportunity. Jan, I, I understand that um, this tour was started when 25 players put $5,000 a piece into a hat and tried to get the ball rolling for the Legends Tour. Can you talk about the growth of this tour and why it's just as important for the players themselves as, as the fans? Well, it's important, as like the, all the players have seen, it, it's something that's really important to us because we get to compete again. Mm -hmm. And it's a different level. I mean, when we played, I mean, we had so many great personalities, not just that they could play. And I think that's what made us so popular. Our galleries were enormous. But now, you know, we appreciate it more. I mean, I'm so much close to friends now because we don't play every <laughs> single week. And, you know, and, and when something good or bad happens in our life, every one of us is there to support. And it's really neat. I mean, we have become a true family. And it's sad that we don't have the opportunity, like with the USGA, that they won't let us have a senior open. I mean, it's totally inequality. And, it, and the thing that really bothered me this year was their campaign was we have a tournament for every player. And they don't. So they're actually lying. So it really bothers me. <laughs> that's, that's the truth, that's though. I mean, good point there. Yep. I mean, I remember growing up, I, you know, I was with my dad. And, you know, we supported, he supported, we supported the USGA since I was a little girl. You know, I'd go with my dad. And, you know, we'd make that cliche, oh, this is for the winning the US Open, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, but. It really is true. And then all of a sudden I get to a certain age and it's like, don't call us, you know, we'll call you when we're ready. Yeah. You know, it's like, why? Uh, you know, I, I, I just, I, I, I don't understand why all of a sudden, you know, I'm not worthy. We're not worthy. We've reached a certain age. You're not worthy now. We're, we're, we're going into other things. And it's like, I always thought, you know, it was a no brainer. I mean, they kept saying, you know, venue, and money and you know blah blah well there are plenty of golf courses where there's a course over here and a course over here put the senior women amateurs over here put us over here and on Sunday get both give both trophies this way you kill two birds with one stone if it's a problem or if it's a hassle but no you know I don't uh, I don't understand why they're just uh, so late in recognizing the importance of this age I understand the importance of the 10, 12 year olds, but the importance of this age, our age, is just as important. And we can tell you, I mean, it keeps us, you know, uh, alive, it keeps the juices flowing, mm -hmm. it keeps our dreams alive. The Legends Tour has maintained that, and I was hoping the USGA would see it sooner than, um, than it has. <laughs>